for that or everybody say miwa sin miwa sin it is beautiful ah say me na ah say me na again ah say me na yeah that's what it means <laughs> ah say me na e pi taku tit e pi taku tit that someone has arrived Ota. Ota. Right here. Oma. Oma. On this. Kitaskino. Kitaskino. Our land. So, Vixi, that's all. Winnika. My name is Joseph. Joseph Nehtau, how and say, son. Utio se pak the horse agagani. Swaga make the stepadani. Kita tamskat na o kakyo miyasuno mo ta kay tutamak. Irish siga, indigenous Canadians, a mama optic. So he introduced himself. His name is Joseph Netauhau. He's from Sturgeon Lake First Nation, uh, and uh, which is really near Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. And uh, he just uh, wanted to acknowledge the uh, relationship between the Irish and the all of the indigenous people that are present today. I've got Cheryl Rondell and say that's on a pito go san square mania. Nehi o square go mr. go su in o square. Alberta papas chase egua miss what you are sky gun of chinia. Maga Saskatoon me go at new even. And she's saying she's uh, her name is Cheryl Rondell. She's half breed. She's a uh, mixed breed from uh, like um, Stigusu means uh, wooden boat people, so arrival of her family from over there. And the other part is Nihio, which is the Cree part. We say Cree, but Nihio is the proper term. And uh, that's uh, that's about it. There's more to that story. <laughs> There's <laughs> always more to that story. <laughs> so, um, Stisi, um, just <clears throat> now uh, I go weep an asana. Um, Oh, um, Montanachican Egua Mio Mithe Mithewin, um, Egua Nitto Tamwin, Mio Mio Thewin, Otsi, Egua Gahio, a Pitotinoa, Pitotinoa, Pitotuinoa, um, Otsi, um, Mio Mio Machihun, Egua, um, um, 
mewe kihtu and egwa um Beautiful when people get this stuff and tobacco and the gift. The things that she's requesting for, I will pray to that which is uh, just to listen with a good heart, to speak from a good place, from a good mind. To have people to get along. So in the spirit of uh, having good relations, so that's really what is being asked for. And to us, that's a lot. And love. So from where I'm sitting here and where I see you all, I pray for all of us. And I just want to do a, a, thank Cheryl for offering me that. And our circle as Indian people, Nihiot, we all have women in our circle. So half the circle is this way. So I wanted to offer this to her for helping me to be part of this and to participate. Mamo Kamatutan, they say. Mamo, I mean, all together. Kamatutan, put our minds and spirits and our heart together. So me say, that's what the old people say. Aha, Mamo, Tamo, Ximanto. Ah, new one, go to Ah, Teokanek. Mamo, Kamatutan, 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 Mamo, Kamat speak. <laughs> Ski, a big swimmer. A gomina. Can you sweet up song to have a motor? I tip you each hand, Mamma Tamaxi Manto. A tip it up, Nana Mot Maminus Tamona, Mount Nichigana, a gomina, and Tihina. Which in an exotic new rakio at the Ochanic, I tip that up to him, Sakamic Maskos and Tate, or Tom Hagano, a pata, or Motom. St. Patrick's Day. So just to briefly explain the prayer, <coughs> the uh, Prayers are passed on from one generation to the other, and these prayers come from uh, many places. So the, uh, my ancestors come from many grandfathers and man, many grandmothers throughout Saskatchewan and North America. So the prayer is a collective of all that, and you speak sincerely right from where you're sitting. You just speak out of sincerity, and you honor, you know, the ancestors. You include, always include the ancestors from before, and you always include you know, is squeak in the half the circle. So I pray to the, all the people who have namesakes to the land. So they have, we call them at So they're they're sacred story keepers, and they're all also stars. And so I include all of those to be part of this discussion and this honoring of this uh, this relationship, wakuto, you know, kinship, and all this. All the people that are going to be on this. Uh, this uh, land speak gathering and they'll be listening so i pray to all of those also many 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 sacred spirit storytellers you know that will be listening and be watching so that's really good and i uh, also pray for all the people that are initiating this and organizing this and our performers so that's included in there so everything comes from a good heart good mind good spirit now that's all i 
Greetings to you all, and let's have a great talk. All right, well, let's see. All right. Uh, Kevin, can, am I on now? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Gom boikas alvor alvor live a Joseph agus a Cheryl as the liar to the father agus on Aaron Allin. Tuesday, Kate Scott er an tunnel special to show. Uh, Turnona ma div a carja, no magin ma div shu the taher salia. Is a law on you law fail a pork and shot in erin. Agus is more known on our dumb erin law shaw. Far in the full chia cur riv roiv illig galan speak. My deepest thanks to you, uh, Joseph and Cheryl, for this most special uh, song and prayer. What a wonderful beginning to this special gathering. gathering. Um, and good morning or good afternoon to those of you across the water. Um, today, it is St. Patrick's Day here in Ireland. And on this special day, it's my great honor to welcome you all to Landspeak. Landspeak is presented by ICUF, that's the Ireland Canada University Foundation in partnership with the Centre for Creative Writing and Oral Culture in the University of Manitoba, the Centre for Canadian Studies in University College Dublin, and the Craig Dobbin Visiting Professor in University College Dublin. We are mindful in organising Landspeak that the history and legacy of the encounter between Indigenous and Irish people has been mixed, and that the triumphs of Irish, Irish communities over the suffering and discrimination they faced on these shores and in the new world must be balanced against the role they played as settlers in the dispossession of indigenous peoples and their lands. Landspeak seeks to acknowledge and to celebrate without appropriating each other's distinct cultures in respectful and caring ways. To those of you joining uh, Landspeak from across the Atlantic, I know you might know very much about Ireland, so I thought I would just share some very brief information to give a context of who we are. Ireland is an island off the west coast of the Atlantic. It's a little bit smaller than Newfoundland, and there's about seven, just under seven million people living on the island. Ours is a land that has been colonized over many centuries. We have a complex history, which I won't go into here, although Perhaps over the coming days, um, you might learn a little bit more. But just su suffice to say that centuries of colonization here have brought us to a point today where many of us who live on this island are descended from those who were colonized, but we're also descended from the colonizers. Colonization has brought great trouble to this island and much remains unresolved. However, there has been much work in recent decades by many people to build peace. Um, and some of those people who have worked uh, on the peace are joining us today on this, uh, on this uh, call, this video call, and will be over the coming days as well. It's thanks to these communities across the island that we're on the island of Ireland, that this island is for the most part a peaceful and harmonious, harmonious land. We are grateful to, to those who throughout centuries of colonization, the many generations, um, as you mentioned, Joseph, it's important to thank and acknowledge our ancestors. And we, as I say, are very grateful to those who throughout centuries of colonization have protected, preserved and championed the ancient ways, uh, preserving an imagination, which today we can celebrate and experience here in Ireland to our native language, our music, our story, our dance, and our song. And it's from this space of imagination and culture that we wish to reach out the hand of friendship to all indigenous peoples from across uh, Turtle Island, Canada. 
I would like to thank you all for joining us uh, wherever you are in the world. And I hope that you find connection, inspiration, and friendship over the coming days. I'd like to thank our funders, um, Imaginative, who have supported the film program, which is on Saturday. Um, the Ireland Canada University Foundation is also supported by the Canadian government through Global Affairs Canada and the Irish government through the Emigrant Support Program. I'd like to uh, thank the team who helped put Landspeak together. We've had um, Cheryl, who you've seen, um, we've met many times over Zoom. I look forward to the day that we can actually meet in person. But uh, uh, Cheryl, Renee Hulan, Paul Halferty, Warren Callieu, Brenda Ron Jordan, Amanda Hopkins. Um, we've had an, many, many Zooms and, and uh, over the last months. And it's so exciting to be at this point today where we're coming together, finally. Um, for those of you uh, joining us, uh, there's been lots of emails and communications. Just to remind you that to join over the coming days, uh, to join Landspeak, you will need to join to log into Hopin. It's very simple. It's a piece of software that um, enables people to have conversations and breakout rooms. So, so it's not just a case of coming to Landspeak to hear people talk, but we hope that, uh, that the hundreds of people who have signed up um, on Eventbrite will join us and become part of the conversation over the coming days. If you're on Twitter, please use the uh, hashtag Landspeak. Um, Shin A. Gawm a boycus live a risha corja as a velin, agus a sulagum gamig carjus common agus spraga a guiv, as an lehenta a ta a jacked. I would now like to introduce two very special performers. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll introduce Liam first uh, and then uh, invite Liam to, to, to uh, introduce and sing a song, and after that, uh, I will in, uh, call on Tora Fay to join us. So Liam O'Meinley is one of Ireland's most gifted and versatile musicians, uh, one of the most gifted and versatile musicians to emerge from Ireland in recent decades. A founding member and front man of the internationally successful Hot S Flowers, Liam also performs widely as a solo artist and in collaboration with other, with other musicians around the world. His music is rooted in Irish tradition with deep connections to gospel, blues, and rock. Um, a courage, uh, so Liam O'Malley. Liam, Gramaga. Gramaga, James. Um, I'm humbled to be here and to have been, to have shared in that song from Joseph and Cheryl and to to bow my head and share in this prayer across across the Atlantic and across the globe and through this medium, this little phenomenal medium that we are, we find ourselves using at the moment. Um, I told you may is as blackly a homes, told you may and show me a I was raised here in Dublin, which is the the colonial capital of Ireland. Um, it, it was actually established by the Vikings <coughs> who were early early invaders, so they say, but we're all part Viking probably. Um, my hug maher mahangadom agus me a folum conus kainz agus rud navgnoch of Ian Shin. Um, Braham Devnacht Leshentana a hugan candle dumpser le tus mohinshire. I am grateful uh, that I have this language that is our indigenous language that connects me to the beginnings of people on this island. And so it's, it's a language that has been battered and bruised. Um, it was illegal to speak. Um, we had school systems here that um, that beat us out of the children here 
um, along with other traditions and customs and ways in in the process of you know turning turning the country into um, a part of a of another identity and another flag or something like that. <laughs> and as James said, that's that's another story that could that we could go into. Um, the fact is that we're all here now, and our ancestors, all of our ancestors, have led us to this moment, and my life has led me to this moment, and I'm. I'm going to sing you a song now. I'll get on with the singing because there'll be plenty of talk um, and we can talk as as we go. So I want to sing um I want to sing a song with the Bowron here. This is this is our version of the drum. Um I think all along the northern hemisphere there are drums like this of the earth. And this is the Bowron. This one comes from Tipperary. And uh so I'm gonna sing. I'm going to sing a, a, a song where the, the singer is actually trying to woo, gain the attention of, of a woman. And uh, he's very confident. Um, he's very confident of the size of his boat and he's very confident of his abilities with his boat and how dry the turf stays as he carries it in the boat. And so he's presenting himself as a as a desirable individual, and her name is Sauni Vrinyala. Sau is a is an old Irish name. It is also pronounced Saiv, depending on what part of the country you're from. Saiv or Sau, two quite different sounds. <clears throat> um, so. That's it. Uh, Liam? Yeah. Yeah. We should go into Liam. Uh, I'm going to now. We should go into Liam. Beautiful. That was wonderful. Um, I'd like to now uh, uh, call on Pura. Hey. 
Purifei, whose name means pure faith, was born in New York City and is an heir to the Tuscarora Indian nation. An award-winning musician, artist, and activist, she's a founding member of the internationally renowned Native Women's a cappella trio, Ulali, if I pronounce that right, with whom she, she brought uh, Native contemporary music to the forefront of the mainstream music industry. Tour Fay is joining joining us from her home in northern Saskatchewan. Hello, Schwan <laughs> Scan. So um thank you. That was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Liam, Joseph, and Cheryl. That was beautiful. Um really happy to be here. Now I, I get an idea now of what what this is with grounding in our um, sharing in our our journeys and our ancestors and um, so my family is from North Carolina my mother's people and their Tuscarora and my father's people who I didn't, wasn't raised with they're from Puerto Rico my dad. And um, half his ancestry is Taino. He's an Arawak Indian, um, his mother. And his father is, uh, his father's people came from Corsica. And there's some Spanish Berber as well. And, um, and so my mom, who's Tuscarora, we also have Scottish and Irish and African. That's very common. And so I guess during the clearances, many of the Scots and the Irish came to North Carolina. And um, I find that there's a lot of similarity in even the melodies um, from my own people in the Carolinas. Yeah, the colonization in the Carolinas is a little different than on the coast is different than in the interior and like up in Canada and so forth. Our people went through slavery as well as residential schools. Uh, we had, we were colonized early on. So a lot was taken from us, our languages, our homelands, and uh, they really tried to wipe our identity. And so a lot of the Indians on the coast there, uh, the east coast of the states, particularly in Virginia and the Carolinas, um, we could not even say that we were native people. We had to um, erase our sacrifice, our identity. And uh, so on, usually on a census record, you would notice that there's certain years that we weren't, uh, were not represented at all. We had to go under a system. It was like white, black, or mulatto or colored. So if you weren't white, you were colored. Depends what year. Anyway, those types of things really wound people. And so today there's, I mean, it's been quite some time now, a resurgence of our languages and renaming our our rivers and our connection to each other through the water through the rivers that's our 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 veins our mother's bloodlines and our indigenous family tree which is through the rivers and how we connect to each other and throughout all of north america and the islands on the sides and even our brothers and sisters to the south of us in South America and even the stories of people coming and going where we really, I think our oldest teachings really talk about how we're connected to each other everywhere, all over on the earth to the sky people, the inner earth and all the realms that we may not see. But let me stop talking. I think I've said enough. I'm really hoping one day to co go to Ireland. And, um, I was going to sing a canoe song. 
And um, I have a bunch of frame drums, hand drums. I don't know if you can hear that. It's too... Uh... Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to use a looper. Way, way, way we go. <clears throat> Way, way, way we go. Way, oh, we are, we hey. Way, way, way we go. Way, oh, we are, we hey. Way, 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 oh, we are, we are, we are, we are, Amazing. Um, 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm actually. I can't see how many people are viewing, but I know hundreds of people kind of signed up, and I'm sure all around uh, Turtle Island and Ireland, Canada, people are just cheering after that. That was beautiful. Um, Liam, I think uh, we pass it back back to you. Uh, if you, uh, yeah, I'll leave it. Say a few words and play it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna do a song that I learned recently. There was a great man by the name of Joe Heaney who came from Rushi Nomainoch in Karna and Connemara, and that is a very very powerful place. The language is still very strong there. He knew about 200 songs by the age of 12, but circumstances forced him to leave his his village and his that part of the country. And he ended up as a doorman in New York and would have met a lot of people in that part of the world during the the whole folk movement of the 60s. But he was a man who uncompromised way of singing. His his singing was what we call shannels. And this song is called Ansirna Randall. And it tells the story of a man. It's a man singing to another man, his brother. And um, it's a heavy it's a heavy song, but uh, I think it's a very beautiful song. Oh, for the most of a leggy 
vision is small of a girl. Tormenting a formal creed is by God, Jojo. The <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Oh, I can't hear you, James. <laughs> that was wonderful, wonderful, Liam. Uh, I, one of the one of the things that uh, the lockdown in Ireland brings is we have a five-kilometer limit, and uh, which means 
you know, wherever you live, that's kind of where you're stuck. But uh, that certainly transported me to Connemara, which was, and that's what music can do, is a beautiful, beautiful connection. Um, so, come in, Margaret. Ah, um, Fáilte, um, do you have do you have time for one more? I know you're, one more song? Sure, yes. Whoops. Okay. Um, this is called Machchi, which means our hearts. So this, this language is from the Carolinas, Virginia area, and um, sort of a pidgin language. It's, it's a Tudelo language. It's kind of combined with the several um, languages from the area. And so I wrote a lot of songs in this language with the help of my friend, uh, Lawrence Dunmore, who speaks too low. So this song was actually on Robbie Robertson's, um, what was it called? Music for the Native Americans or something like that. So the words just say, our hearts are full, our minds are good, that um, our ancestors, they come and they give us strength. And they say, never forget who you are or where you come from. And always stand tall and sing and dance. Sacred bird, not who's first, but where you belong, where many old spirits dance or song. Piece of paper, a devil's life for this you let my people die to return the land of the eyes through the earth, the sky will be the price to the. have years to grow. You have no spirit, no soul. God, you are all the death from graves. You rob a piece of paper, a devil's life. For this you let my people die. To return all the lives to the earth, the sky, to pay the price to the Earth, the sky, how so will rise. <clears throat> Da 
Um, thank you for that was that was beautiful um i think uh we there, we have liam back yeah that's great i think we have we have time for uh um a question or two i think um let me see i don't have them here yet but um yeah if you could put the i think there's been a request for questions on the zoom chat while we're waiting could i just say um to remind people that uh, Landspeak is going to carry on for the coming three days, and that to uh, in order to join, you'll need to log in through Hopin. I think the login is going to be put in the chat there. Um, I'd also say that we are really very pleased to offer free access to all of Landspeak events. Um, it's very important to us that as many people as possible feel welcome. Um, if you would like to support Landspeak, um, that is possible as well. And I think there's going to be a link put in the Zoom chat as to how to do that as well. Um, now, OK, I don't have any questions yet. I wonder, um, Liam, Purafe, do you have any kind of thoughts arising from the, the last hours? Rather than me just talk, talk away. I want to come to Ireland. <laughs> that's, it. Uh, that's a result. <laughs> result. <laughs> yeah. It it is it never ceases to amaze me how you know music music sends out our information, um, whoever we may be, and um, I've met many people who have come to Ireland because of music. You know, they've come here because they've heard. And it might be rock and roll, it might be trad, it might be whatever it is. But music invites us. And um, and then the music that we make for ourselves, the folk music, the, the music of our, the music that we're compelled to make, um, the music that our ancestors made, is what invites us forward, I, I think. What, what shines a light on how we could rise, what we can be. That's... Uh, that's that's a thought um yeah there is a question uh we have a question from daniel mcwilliams um do you hear any similarities between irish traditional and indigenous canadian music yeah that because I'm not from Canada, but I'm familiar with um, especially the Métis and the fiddling, of course, you know, mm. um, which would be, you know, Celtic of, with mostly Scots and um, some of the French from um, from the uh, Bruton, from the mm. from the north, the northwest above Normandy, right? So mm. that music is um, very similar, but even in my own ancestry, 
in the Carolinas, uh, there's a lot of similarity, and especially in dancing um, with the clogging. Up here, they call it uh, jigging, but down south, they call it clogging, and it's very similar also to smoke dance, which is part of our longhouse repertoire, our social dancing, where it's very moccasin dances, a lot of fancy foot work. And yeah, there's a lot of similarities, of course, in drums and so on. And there's a lot. Yeah, and I think too, when, when, the, when the instruments are stripped away and you just hear the voice, um, the world over, I think you, you, you start hearing our connections. Um, once you know that the, the voice alone is, is as, as old as humanity, so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's for all to, 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 to just to ponder on and what you might not hear one day, you might hear another day. And what I might say one day might make any sense tomorrow. Um, but, but we, uh, you know, we, uh, we make sound to, 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 to give us a feeling, a, a fe an individual feeling and a collective feeling. And those of us <laughs> who take a step forward, uh, who are somehow driven to communicate with other reaches of 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 the worlds, and that's given different names, and um, and those names would be can often be hopped upon and utilized and bought and sold, which is not the original idea. But you know, someone who goes further into a different feeling um, when you sing a song. It, my experience of songs in 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 this in this country is when you know we'd all be gathered and in the middle of the night somebody starts singing a song and uh, the whole room goes quiet and the whole room travels with that song and um, that's everyone knows that you know there's nothing. Um, that there's nothing actually supernatural about that, but if you wrote it down and you put it into a, a fairy tale or a, myth, a mythological story and say, he sang a song and everybody traveled with him on the wings of that song, you'd think, well, that's, that's magic. And that's what it is. Yeah. You know, can I say something also? Please. Is Years ago, I went to Scotland and met a, a woman who was a well-known singer named Maeve McKinnon. And we did a project together. And she started to sing this song, an old song. And it was exactly the same melody as a song from my home. She started to sing it and I just started to cry. <laughs> it was amazing yeah. to hear. And then we, we, um, we overlapped them and it was like, you couldn't write that. You know, it was almost like hers was in double time and mine was in a long, it was the same, same song. Yeah. Yeah. So that's to add to what you were just saying. Yeah. Um, well, Liam, uh, for a fay, can I say that through the chat, there's just uh, a, like a stream of gratitude um, and appreciation for your performances. Um, and I'd like to thank you on behalf of everyone who's on the chat. Uh, I know you can't see the chat stream, but just to, to, to thank you so much for your performances today. I know, I think, um, you know, part of what Landspeak is, it's a conversation happening over days. And I'm sure as people over the coming days think about today and think about, you know, engage over the coming days, um, mm. they, they form questions and forum questions and ideas and I'm sure I think Liam I know you're going to be here. yeah and we are yeah we are returning to Joseph um for a closing story but just before we do just to say that as I mentioned before we look forward to the this chat continuing this conversation continuing over the coming days so again on behalf uh before we turn to Joseph for a, a story and um, 
Thank you. Uh, thank you both again. Gromila Mahoy. Slamdik. Kumagis. Ona. Great. And so we uh, we are returning now to Joseph Netauhau, who is going to uh, tell a story to close today today's event, but also to maybe inspire some thought for the coming days. So over to you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you, James. Awesome morning. Enjoying everything here. We're going to start off with a <clears throat> a little song called One Sky, which we wake up. And uh, this song was uh, a song that the person who gave me the story that I'm about to tell loved, you know. And this is a song that we sang for her during the time she was alive and also when she was crossing over. So this is called One Sky, and it's a sunrise song. You hear the birds and the land is looking beautiful. So that's basically what it's all about. Good for this beautiful morning. I just uh, reminds me of this time of year when Indigenous people across Canada start their singings for the summer Sundance. <clears throat> but this story is uh, always uh, reminds me, I guess, of our relationship here on this land, and it feels the same here as I'm telling you these stories and songs from from my humble little home here on the, in, the, in the hood here. And it's like an agreement we're making, you know, to, uh, to get along, you know, to be related and to connect with each other and to share love and relationship. And so this uh, old woman is, she was named Nihio Maga. But she was also a half breed woman from Kwakbiosagaikan or Green Lake, just not far from a place called Pasquanak, which is uh, Meadow Lake, just south of where Purufe is uh, living, just south about two hours or so. So this story comes from that territory. I'm so grateful for meeting Glacia Bear which was her other name, you know, there's uh, so this story is about her when she was a young woman and she made a, many accomplishments later, but as a young woman, she would go about to uh, Magwasagaikan, Loon Lake, Sikip Sagaikan, Water Hen, Ministikwin, another community not far from Loon Lake, so she would, Island Lake. All over she traveled in that territory. Helping elders, which are like our teachers, they're our foundation of our community. So someone, I'm glad she took on that role, you know, coming into Meadow Lake, working for, for the Tribal Council, Meadow Lake Tribal Council. So I spent at Sipoetito in Piaquisaga. One day she left and she headed to the west to Magwasagaikan. Looking around to see who can, who needed her help as a community health representative. And so she uh, came upon this pathway after she was given directions and guidance to this old man 
who is living by himself. And so off she went and she went down this path and she started walking. And as she was walking, she noticed there was a little string right from the road, right all the way down to the house. You know, these houses were old shacks, you know, they're not the best housing. Probably the teepees were a lot better. But anyway, he went, she went down, Nihio, Ipamoti, walked down there. And often, doors are not locked. And just the same though, you knock on a door or you call out, Oh, Ikapo, anybody home? At, at first, there was no answer, and then she called out again, Oh, Yekapo, anybody home? All of a sudden, she heard this muffled sound. You know, got over here. So she opened the door, and she started heading towards that sound, and she went to that, into that room, and there was this big pile of clothes. I think this elder loved flea markets and grad sales. So there's all this pile of clothing. And she could hear the sound coming from there. Puti, over here. Jiska, she says. Oh, just wait. So she went over there and took this big blanket of clothing off this old grandpa. There was an old man underneath there. Finally, here, here there he was. Ah, Kikwai, Dan Sinosim. How are you, my grandchild? Is there something you want? I said, no, 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 no. I'm hired by the tribal council. I come here to help you. I'm here to clean up your place. Do whatever you want, you know, just to clean up your place, maybe feed you, get some food. And so she did that. She just, ah, me sin no sim. She said, he says, that's good. Dancy She says, what's your name, old man? Wawiki sick. Wawiki sick, round sky. That's my name. I used to be a chief a long time ago, a hereditary chief. Oh, it's good that you're coming to help me. So, Nihio started cleaning up the house, spent a few days there. I school, she would go to town and she'd come back with a big bowl of. You know, venison stew and dried meat and bannock, you know, and she would feed this old man, bring him back to strength, you know, lift his spirit. And this old man was so grateful, so grateful. And so one day, you know, this old man was sitting there and Nihio arrived again, you know, came back to the house and says, No, Sim. I want to go to Waterhen Lake. I want to go to that place. There's a treaty day happening there. Hey, we are They're going to be serving buffalo burgers. And so Nihio says, Aha, Kapinat, then I'll come and get you one day, Mushum. Hey, hey. So the day came along and she came along. She came and picked this old man up. I used to have a kubo yesterday, and I used to have a cowboy hat. And one day my grandchildren came by here, and that was that. I was with my cowboy yesterday. So they jumped into the car, and off they went towards Pasquanak, the middle lake. And they stopped in to a little store, Daugamik, and they walked in there. Ah, Muso, we'll meet up here, Here's one hat. So the old man put on the one hat, you know. And Nihio says, Oh, get the guy up, you, and you look very handsome, Muso, grandfather. You look very handsome. Hey, hey, the old man spoke up. Danse the steak. What color is it? Danse the steak. Oh, mushroom. Kaskete, wow. Grandfather is black. Oh, namoya, namoya, yeah, go. That's not the one my grandchildren took for themselves. They Usawa stood in they said it was a brown hat. A brown hat. And we got to get out of here. 
okay, we'll go to the other store. So off they went to the other store. And they went inside there. And sh sure enough, there was a brown hat there. So, hey, Mushom. Hey, grandfather, you look so handsome. How is it look? What color is it? Brown. Oh, you go. That's the one. That's the one. So he put that on and off they went to Sehip Sagaikanik, Waterhand Lake, First Nation. And they arrived there and uh, the uh, old man says, No, Sim. Don't He said, you've lifted my so much. I'm going to visit here for a while. I'm going to visit my friends and my relatives. So, um, I want you to come in the future here. Come and see me once, once more. I want to gift you something. And so he stayed there at that treaty day and had his buffalo burgers and visited all his friends and family. He will. That's what was that. And he went home a few days later. So Nihio went to check on this old man. And sure enough, he was home. And he was sitting like this. And Nihio looked at this old man. Hey, my mom tonight, man. What are you thinking about, old Mushum, my old man? Oh, my mom tonight, man. That's it. Is the Bahama then? He go home to stay with you. I'm just thinking about how I could give give back to you for all the effort, all the work that you've done to help me, to lift my spirit, to make me feel good. Hey, the old man said, but I'm finished my thought. In Waterhand Lake, there's a tree that stands. Says, there's a tree in Waterhen, and on the top, I tied a bag, and inside this bag, there's a red little bag. Bring that red little bag. Maga, I got to see but do not bother the medicines that are in there. It's tied up, so you have to untie that rope and pull it down. Nihi went off to see Keep Sagaigani, Waterham Lake. Found a tree just exactly where the old man described. It untied that rope and she pulled it down. Pulled it down and they chipped that, you know, bring muskum or some bringing down her bag and then she opened that bag and looked. And there was a red bag, and she brought that back. Kiwi, so she carried this back to the old man's house. And when the old man was uh, sitting there once again, took that little bag, you know, he opened it, and I opened it up, and we reached inside. And inside brought out a little pouch, you know. And inside was this. A, tre a treaty medal. And so, Nihio said to Mushum, grandfather, This is huge. It's a big thing that you're giving me. I don't know if I can accept it. Stahip Matsun, that's life, that's so big, and it's bigger than money, you know, it's not worth, it's priceless. Ah, no sim, the old man kept speaking, grandchild. Stahiguitsi, and you helped me so much. I want you to have this, I want you to keep it. Sometime in the future, it might help you, it might help you. 
Well, if I need here, we ask him. Nihio was thinking, you know, the way we are as Cree people, and she understood that you never refuse what is gifted to you. If somebody gives you something, don't push it away. And so she took that medal, you know, she took it, and she honored that relationship, and took that medal and took it and put it in a safety deposit box in Meadow Lake. And she kept it there for years. And then one day, Cheryl and I were working up there, and we came over there, and we started to uh, you know, work with Nihio, with Glisha Bear. Now she's an elder. Like she had to be the chief before that was working in service all her life. And there she was, and she was sitting there, you know, looking at this, thinking about this medal, you know, thinking about this medal. She says, and I'm, th I'm not talking to her. I said, Kigoi Mom what are you thinking about, old woman? And she says, oh, oh, go, go to flying dust for nation, first nation. The community here wants, wants to buy this medal off of me. They want it. Put it in, put it in their office. You know, they want to put it in their office. And I said, I just asked, curious, you know, what did they offer? I said, oh, they offered me a thousand dollars. I said, oh, it's priceless. It's priceless. So she went back and negotiated, and it came back with six thousand dollars. And with that money. She bought a car for her grandchild who would drive her around. She paid her bills off at the store, and she distributed all the money to all her grandchildren. And that's the story that Nihio told me many, many years ago. And and this is Waweiki Sik. This is not the medal, but Waweiki Sik was one of the you know hereditary chief and kept his medal. And these medals are extremely invaluable. I'm sure we could probably do an agreement with Ireland some point, you know, and we'd have an exchange like this. So, I'm Scott now back your greetings and thank you for listening. <laughs> ah, apparently Warren Callew is also from Middle Lake. Thank you, James, for taking me on here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for, for that story and for, for your prayer and your song and thanks to all. Um, Everyone who contributed to Liam, uh, Kurafe, uh, to Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, Liam. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> the hand. <laughs> it's evening time here in Dublin. Um, so, thank you all. Um, I want to just maybe to remind people again uh, to join us tomorrow and the coming days. We have some really uh, really fantastic events coming up. Um, tomorrow we have the Irish Ambassador to Canada, Eamon McKee, is uh, chairing a panel. I'm not going to go through all the details, but I am because uh, he is Ireland's representative in Turtle Island uh, and Canada. Eamon McKee, he's chairing a panel tomorrow um, with Mike Mitchell, who was Grand Chief of Aquathasne for many years and a lacrosse player, and Bruce Rampoint, who is a Hall of Fame uh, lacrosse player, and and from our the Irish side, Paul Rouse, who's a hurling player and a historian. So there'll be really interesting talk discussion there about sport and what it means to us and our identity. But actually, I shouldn't really single that out because we have lo lots more stories from both sides um, of the water, music. We have a film program on Saturday. Lots of talks. So hopefully, we will see you all uh, see you all over the coming days and. We'll have a chance to talk to each other and meet as well. So, girl, me and Mother Goyf. Girl, me and Mother Goyf. Can I ask you something now? Hey, 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 hey.